Hey, everybody. Can you all hear me? I think you can, it looks like. Cool. Well, hey, uh, I'm back. Key West. Um, is like the screen backwards? Because it, it normally shows this uh, to me the other direction. Like, can you read the sign or is it backwards? All right. Well, maybe it's just the way it's displaying to me. YouTube went and changed up the way they do live streams. So they have a, a whole bunch of different stuff you got to jump through here uh, to get your live streams out. So any case, um, I am here now. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and kick it off, guys. Hey, so my agenda, um, I wanted to give you guys a quick recap of my vacation since a lot of you have been asking how it went. Um, what I have discovered, as you can see, I'm not really a cruise person. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I ate a lot. I think I gained like 15 pounds uh, <laughs> from eating. Uh, but I'm not a beach person. So I try to avoid the sun as much as I can because I catch on fire. Uh, so <laughs> I'm like a merdral. Let's call it that. So, yeah, that was my vacation. I am very happy to be back. I'm very happy to be back where I have Internet. I can make videos again. I've been uh, kind of excited to get some new stuff out to you all. So uh, I've got a couple that I'll be working on. I've got a video that will come out tomorrow. So I'm excited about that. So there's the quick update. Uh, I'm back. All right, live stream over. I'm just joking. Um, so there's a couple things I wanted to get done in this. Number one, I, as always, I want to open this up to anybody that wants to ask questions or wants to uh, basically just talk in general. Uh, anything about the Wheel of Time, what a lot of you guys have been reading. I mean, I know we do that in the Discord, but here's your opportunity to get your questions out there and uh, address them live. So we'll do that. The other thing uh, that I want to do is I want to go through some of the, we, for those of you who don't know, we've been running a contest here on the channel while I was on vacation uh, to get on our next episode of Wheel of Time Jeopardy. So uh, we, I have not actually read through many of these yet. I've looked at a few of them as they come in, but we've been running a contest to get into that. And the contest was come up with the funniest sword forms that may not have been included in the Wheel of Time. So I figured for part of this, I would be <laughs> rolling through uh, uh, some of those contests. So uh, Anthony, so no rolling of the oceans. Uh, man, you know, we, there, for those of you who don't know right now, there's a hurricane in the Gulf. Um, and while I did not uh, see the hurricane, like it wasn't near me necessarily, we were feeling some of the waves from it. And so on our way back, I didn't get seasick, but man, that would have been pretty awful um, to be in the ocean much longer. Um, and I'm not, I don't like being cramped up in a ship. So, all right. So let me hit on some of your comments here. Sword puns. Yes. There, there are 75 official ones. Yes. Uh, we did come up with some other ones. So I want to run through some of those. So we will do that. Um, I'm glad I'm back too, man. I'm, I'm excited to be back here and get back at it. Uh, so, any case, I'm going to scroll back to the very beginning of our sword form channel here. Um, and we will run through some of these, and I will laugh at some of them. Um, I'm not going to pick the winner on this live stream. I am going to run through some of these, and you guys can give your reactions to them. I'm going to pick them, and I will announce the winner on the next video. So, that will come out tomorrow. Um, he did make a list. You're right. Let me go back and find that list. <laughs> oh, sorry. I just read one of those and that was funny. Um, Nolan had stroking the undercarriage. That's a good one. All right. So there's the document. Let me pull that up. So I'll read some of these out. The heron spreads its cheeks. That's a good one. Um, I'm certainly not one of the sea folk, by the way, Austin. Um, I, I found that out here. You know what I am? I'm a lake folk. So I would much rather go to a lake and spend some time out on a lake and ski and tube and all that. I am not an ocean person. I just don't find it that fun. And like I said, I can't sit on a beach. So 
I will literally get skin cancer and die very quickly. Um, if any of you have seen uh, Chernobyl, the HBO special, which, by the way, was awesome. Highly recommend it. Um, but that's basically what happens to me. Uh, my skin starts falling off if I sit in the sun too long. <laughs> um, wow, this one's <laughs> uh, heavy vocabulary here. The Shinaran masticates the, a sausage. <laughs> uh, these are going to be good. While I'm doing these, and so you guys can kind of fill in here, uh, I want to hear from you all, what are some of the things right now, because I'll, I'll tell you a couple things news-wise that are going to be coming up here. Um, I won't say I have insider knowledge, but I will say that to an extent I do. Uh, there will be some announcements here in the next couple weeks regarding the Wheel of Time show. So what are you guys most excited to hear about next? Uh, so is it more casting news? Is it more location stuff? Do you want to hear more information on number of episodes? Like, what is some of the stuff that you all are excited uh, to hear about? And MK, if it was, if I told you how I had insider info, then it wouldn't be insider info. So I can't do that. And no, I don't, I don't have any of the actual information. So let me say very quickly, I don't know specifics. I just know that some of them are coming. Okay. So let's just say that. So what, what what stuff are you guys the most excited uh, to hear about? Um, so while you're doing that, I'm going to read through some of these, and I'd love to hit on some of your comments there in the in the the comment section. So, <laughs> uh, the well, so here we go. Z Z wrote this one, and the master debater spews her chat. Now I'm not sure if that really fits a sword form. <laughs> uh, any case, okay, so how many episodes per season? See, Daniela, that is one I'm really, really excited to, to hear about here, uh, how many episodes per season, because uh, I think a lot of that is going to dictate how they formulate the plots for each of the seasons. So if we get, like, I would love to see, ideally, 12 episodes. I don't think we're going to get that. I think it'll be 8 to 10, just based on Amazon's history with doing stuff. I, I really think that's what it'll be. Um. So I know a lot of you really want to see casting news, and I'm excited about that too. The only problem with casting, when they release it, like, yeah, I got I got excited very much with Rosamund Pike. I, I love that choice. It's not who I would have originally thought of, but the more and more I think about it, the more and more of a better choice I actually think it is. So I'm excited about that. Casting, though, only leads to more questions for me because then I want to see costume design. Then I want to see, like, I'm anxious for any info we can get, but um, I really want to know more of the specifics. Like, are they going to drop all the episodes at once? That's one of the things I want to know. Is it true that they are packing the first two novels into the first season? Uh, Frodo, no, we don't know that. I Some of the chapter titles would lead you to believe that, that they've released, but we don't know that specifically, and I'm not sure that they're actually going to do that. They may be misleading us a little bit with the chapter titles. Uh, I did a video in the past on that, so if you want to check that out, I don't remember what video it was, actually. If one of you remembers, put it in the in the description there. So obviously a lot of you want casting. Um, casting of the boys. Okay, so yeah, specifically focusing on Rand, Matt, and Perrin. Now, let me pose this question to you on that. Are any of you going to be upset if all of them are people you've never heard of? Is that going to be upsetting to you? Uh Rachel Weiss is Lanfear. I don't think she's going to be cast as Lanfear. Just my opinion. I think they're. Um, I think it would be awesome, awesome to get Rachel, but I'm not sure that's who they're going to cast as Lanfear. I don't know that we're actually going to see Lanfear, by the way, until the second season. That would be my guess. Um, so, who's going to play Olver? Well, that's very clear. Daniel Green will be playing Olver. That's already a given. Um, what do I think of the sort of truth? Uh, you know what? I will tell you this. My opinions on that are very much in line with Daniel Green. So I want to stick to specific world wheel of time stuff, but I will say euphoric, my opinions match Daniel Green's opinions on the sort of truth. So if you want to go there, go there. Okay. Um, as long as they're fit. So a lot of you guys are responding to the question about, uh, you know, the boys being complete unknowns. 
So that being said, what if they don't look exactly like what you thought? Um, Because I know there was a lot of backlash, surprisingly, about Rosamund Pike as Moraine. A lot of people said she's too tall. Do those things matter? Like, does it matter if Perrin isn't gigantic? If it's a good actor, does that matter? If Rand isn't towering. See, I actually think it matters that Rand is towering because that fits in with the cultural part. But that all depends on what they're going to do with the Aiel anyway. Are they going to make the Aiel distinctly tall? Um, I'm in the camp that as long as we get quality actors and actresses, I'm not worried about physical looks. I think that can be changed. There's a lot of different things they can do. And frankly, a lot of it doesn't matter. Uh, some of it does. You know, some of it is the distinction, distinctions culturally. But I don't think a ton of it matters in the standpoint of... Um, it's going to wreck the story now that Moraine is taller than short. You know, she's seven inches taller than she's supposed to be. Uh-oh, that's destroying the story. I don't I don't agree with that. Okay, so whew, too many comments here. I hope they keep um, Narishma in the show. I'm not sure who they'll cast for him. Yeah, that one will be a, a long ways down the road. I mean, the, he doesn't even show up, uh, spoilers, until book five. By the way, guys, we're going to be doing spoiler discussions, so I, I'm not going to try to get into any like in-depth major spoilers, but uh, spoiler warning yellow. Uh, we're going to talk about the wheel of time, and so naturally some spoilers might come up, so uh, be careful if you haven't read the books. Um, but yeah, he doesn't show up till later. Uh, you know, again, ca characters like him, they can. I, I don't know that they need to cast anybody important. Who I want them to spend their, their budgeting money on casting i want the villains to be very big names i want i want lanfear to be a big name i want moradin slash ishamael to be a big name um so yeah i i i want them to spend their money on the villains um that's who i want to see the money i don't necessarily outside of maybe moraine and lan i don't necessarily need anybody to be a big time cad swain would be really cool i would love to see like helen mirren as cad swain she, I love her. I think she'd be awesome in that role. I don't think she'll get, or Judy Dench, even though she looks a little old. I just love them, uh, period. And so I think they could fit that role. They've got that quick, snappy. Um, but again, I won't be upset if it's not. Um, so let me hit on some of your comments here. Um, phew, sorry, so many comments. Hard to see all these. So sorry if I skip you. Um, Spoiler warning, Rand is the Dragon Reborn. Yes. Um, does it matter if Nynaeve in the TV series doesn't ever tug her braid? Well, we already know that there will be one braid tug. Uh, Brandon Sanderson said that in his interview. So, I, again, those are little idiosyncrasies. I don't think we need to see her yanking on her braid all the time, but that's fan service to see that. I mean, most people – keep in mind, guys, the audience of the show or the audience that they intend for the show is not us book readers. I know that may hurt you to hear that. We already know the story. Um, they'll put little fan servicey things in there, but by and large, the goal is to attract a new audience, and that's what I'm all about. I want to attract a new audience to this book series. Um, so the show will be a great place to do that because just like what happened with A Song of Ice and Fire when the when Game of Thrones came out, people will come back and read it. That's why A Song of Ice and Fire got as popular as it did book-wise was because of the show. It was already moderately popular before that. It became extremely popular after that. So that's what I'm looking forward to with the book series. Um, and obviously, I want to see it on a visual medium. I think the main reason characters casting will go really slow. Is, sorry, I'm maybe not reading that right. I think the main characters casting will really show what. Sorry, will really show what they are going to do with the secondary characters. Agreed. But again, secondary characters depending on how often they're on the screen, can be bigger names just because they're not on the show that much. So, you know, that can be a big part of it too. Like, again, I'll go with Rosamund Pike. Uh, big spoiler here, but she's really, Maureen is really only active for a third of the books. Okay? So she doesn't, they can pay her a lot of money, and she doesn't have to be in the show from start to finish. Okay, they're not going to have to keep upping her contract. She won't make a return until much later in the book series, really till the second to last book. So, okay. Um, 
what age group do you think they'll be catering to? Um, well, the cup, I mean, again, I don't think it matters. I, I don't think they're going to, again, keep in mind it's Amazon. So if it's network TV, who are they catering to? Well, it's the 18 to 35 demographic because that's who they advertise to, right? Um, there are no advertisements on an Amazon show. What they're trying to do is attract new um, Amazon Prime subscribers. So I think that pretty much runs the gambit. I don't know that they're going to pinpoint, based on money at least, I don't know that they'll be doing that. Now, if I'm off the top of my head and I'm just spouting off here, I think they're going to be looking in that 25 to basically the same Game of Thrones demographic, 25 to, to 40-ish would be my guess. But I have no idea what I'm talking about there. Um, every show makes good and bad changes. I'm more interested in writing and plot. Agreed. Um, I, I'm i not... I can respect the books for what they are and have the show be something totally different. Um, and I'm okay with that. I really am. As long as they don't destroy it and turn people off to the Wheel of Time books, I'm okay with changes... Um, I really am, and that, that doesn't make me a hater of the books. I just respect the books for what they are. I'm always going to have the books to read, regardless of what they do with the show, but I want them to do a good job with the show because it's something that's been important to me. So, okay. So I've always pictured Maureen as a petite, rather lovely-looking woman, aged 40, who looks 25. Yeah, that's kind of the way she's described, um, although they can't really put an age to her. And she is about, Maureen, just so you guys know, is about 40, 45 years old in the books. So she's not that old. Um, how will they portray the loose there in relationship with Rand, just a voice, or will they be a separate actor? Well, they're going to, if they do the prologue, they'll have an actor. So, but that, that that's really the only time we ever see Luce Theron as a character. Now, there might be flashbacks. So... And then will they show him as like a ghost? Will they make will they make Rand more schizophrenic? Because this is actually a good production question. So I'm going to pose this to you guys because this will this will pop off into the question here. Do you want to see like uh, I'm thinking in the movie A Beautiful Mind with Russell Crowe, where he's a schizophrenic mathematician? He sees people, and rather than having voice in their head, they portray the actual people, and he sees them. Okay, do you want to see Luce Theron portrayed that way where Rand actually sees him, although he doesn't exist? I think that would be more impactful to watch rather than just a voice in his head because a voice in his head um, could always be weird. I'm wondering how, how will that be done? What do you guys want to see on that? Would you rather see Luce Theron as an as a ethereal, like, off actor somewhere or would you rather um, him just be a voice in Rand's head? So interesting to see what you guys will say about that. <laughs> Billy Zane. I don't think we're going to see Billy Zane, unfortunately. I think he blew his chance at Wheel of Time by jumping in that awful pilot. <laughs> um, I feel like a physical actor, the Lich Lord. Uh, well, I feel like a physical actor as a sort of ghost would work better for a TV show rather than just a voice. I kind of agree. Um, I'm wondering how that would how that would look. You know, I, I don't know because I'll say this. I didn't think this is me personally. When I first read the books, I didn't think Rand was crazy. Like I didn't think he was going mad. I thought that it was just perceived that way by everybody else. So I thought everybody assumed Rand was going crazy, but he really wasn't because Luz Theron was a part of the pattern and helping him. And that was what was supposed to happen. That's what I thought reading it. Now, that was my first read through. Later on, I realized how freaking crazy Rand actually was getting. And yes, Luz Theron was real, but he was also crazy. So I kind of like the visual representation as I'm just kind of visualizing it in my head, but I can be convinced otherwise. I'm not dead set on that. <laughs> James Earl Jones. Yeah, we'll have Mufasa talking for uh, Luz Theron. Now, that would be interesting. Let me throw this out to you because I know this will throw a bunch of people into a hissy fit, even though it's never described. What if they made Luce Theron black? Would that tick people off if it was like uh, James Earl Jones and uh, the the actor was was black? Hmm. 
I, obviously I wouldn't care. I, I think that'd be kind of cool, but um, I know there's a lot of people that will get absolutely triggered that I just said that. So, <laughs> um, so a lot of you guys seem to be agreeing with my have a visual representation of, of Luz Theron. That's interesting. Okay, uh, what else? Robin tries to change Rand into Luz Theron in the Dream of Fire. No, he actually tries to change Rand into like an animal. I think he tries to turn him into a horse, if I remember correctly, um, or a pig or something like that. Um, I'm fairly certain Rand almost turns into a horse or something like that, Brandon. Um, and then Nynaeve, with Mogidian's help, obviously, attacks Ravin, and that, that's what stops it. Because Ravin pretty much had Rand beat. Uh, until Nynaeve helped. Was it? I don't remember. I don't remember that one. It's been, uh, I don't remember that specifically where he tries to turn him in to lose there. And I don't remember that. All right. Y'all are making me, uh, going to remove comments. Um, hey, MK, I am going to make you a moderator. I just found out I can do that. Uh, if you see anything that looks ridiculous in the channel, please feel free to remove it. Because um, I just saw something that was rather, rather ridiculous that I don't want to see in the channel. So, any case, uh, what else? It's a, The horse was naive. I, I don't, I'm going to have to go back and read that because a lot of you guys seem to have different uh, remembrances of that scene than I do. So, Boric Belfin, he's a Czech swords master instead of being... Huh. So, yeah, absolutely Rand was going crazy. So, I in my rereads, I definitely see that. Um, you know, I've got... I've definitely got to go back and reread that now. Idris Elba for Luz Theron. I would love to see... Now, if we're talking about a fan casting that's not going to happen, just to be clear... I would love to see Idris Elba as Robbie. I think that would be awesome. Um, I would love to get Idris Elba because he's just an amazing actor, number one. But I would love to have him have him be Robbie in the in the books. That would be one of my fan fan casts right there. I would love. To, I really want to see a ghost loose there and try to strangle the Ashman during any interaction, just like it's a ranting madman. See, I think there. If you add a visual aspect to that, that could be pretty cool. Um, I think that could be interesting. So, who knows? Uh, all men go mad. Yeah, see, now, here's why I didn't understand, because all men don't go mad the same way. The madness uh, reaches different people in different ways, and I just thought Rand was avoiding it. I don't know why I thought that, but... Any case, uh, the first time through, I thought everybody else was wrong and Rand was right. And then I realized how crazy Rand actually was. You know, that's the different, um, you know, I guess that's the difference. Um, okay, so I'm going to read a couple more of these while you guys, what are some other things? We'll go back to the original question, by the way. What are some of the other things you're excited to see information leaked about? So, like, do you guys want to see costume design? Do you want to see the actual sets? What stuff do you want to see? Um, coming out here because guys, I don't know if you realize it. We are roughly two months away from the start of filming That's nuts. We're two months away from the start of filming for the series so Any case uh, So I'm gonna hit on a couple of these while you guys answer those questions. I'm gonna read a couple of these uh, Tinker in the kitchen well, yeah um Five Fingers of Loneliness. Oh, goodness. <laughs> That's terrible. Uh, flicking the Bean. Stroking the Undercarriage. There's a good one. <laughs> some of these are... I can't even read some of these. Sheathing the Hot Dog. Now, I don't, I don't know that that's going to fly as an actual Wheel of Time sword form. Um, okay. Let me hit on some of these. So a lot of you want people. Rafe has said that that his his goal is quality, um, and so I I'm excited about that. What I want to see now are the costume designs, the set designs. Um, I would love to even see a teaser trailer with it just showing logos. Like that's the type of stuff I want to see. 
Yeah, see, the Lich Lord and I agree. A, a trailer or any idea for an intro should be cool. So uh, what are some of your ideas for the intro sequence? For me, I want to see the wheel spin. Like the, the, the concept of the show is time turning back and forth. And so I don't I don't want to see a copy of like what um, uh, of what they did in uh, in Game of Thrones. I'm sorry, I'm losing my mind. Uh, I didn't want to see a repeat of that, even though that was a cool idea. I think something to do with the wheel turning in the wind, like bringing in that the opening sequence to each book, where you know they talk about the wind passing things and cities and. I want to see that, and I want to see the passage of time. I don't know how they're going to do that, but I want them to incorporate those things into the intro for the show. And I'll tell you one other thing. This is an underrated part of Game of Thrones success. Totally underrated part, but it's really, really important. I'm looking forward to seeing who they're going to hire to score the show. The music was an absolutely huge part of Game of Thrones. Huge part. So I want to see that. It's not just the opening theme, it's the background score. Um, and if you don't think music plays a big role in that, you got to pay more attention to some of these shows because that music sets the tone. Um, think of The Red Wedding in Game of Thrones. Reigns of Castamere, beautifully composed. You They foreshadowed it um, earlier in the season, and so when you heard it, it was chilling. And then you, you fast forward to the scene, and I think it's the end of season six when Cersei blows up the Baylor. Like, um, again, that music was chilling. So that all plays a big role in it to me. So what else? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm missing, like, so many comments here, guys. I'm sorry. Um, I think music is half the success, though. So that is, that is something that um, I'm pretty excited about. So I want to see music. I want to see costume and set design. Anything that they release picture-wise, I'm going to be pretty excited about. So concepts. And I, I think we will get some of those. I really do. That's the kind of stuff they can release without spoiling anything. That would be great service to us that would give us a lot of excitement that aren't really big things. Like if they show a costume design, something like that. Okay, I want a lot of actual music like in the ends and the gleaming. Yeah, they're going to have to hire songwriters because they're – uh, there is a lot of music in the show. Um, whoever they cast as Tom is going to have to sing or, you know, be entertaining. So that's going to have to be a part of it. There are going to be ins. They're going to be raucous. Like, I'm excited for some of the music. Okay, I'm be interested to see some of the costumes they use for the Sean Chan. I'm assuming that's Sean Chan. Sean Chan, I don't know if that's what you're trying to say, but I'll assume that's what you're trying to say. Yeah, that'll be interesting. The insectoid hats and things like that. That'd be interesting. Um, as long as there are plenty of memorable, memeable gifts, uh, memeable gifts for the series, I will be happy. Yes. Because then, uh, yes, I'll just say yes to that. Okay. So what else guys what else do you want to see here let me scroll back a little bit because i know i missed like half of these interested to see how shadow spawn will look i am too um i want the first episode to play out sort of like a horror film excuse me um i want to see the the merger all be terrifying i want to see trollocs be horrific looking and i want them to be practical effects not cgi they can add CGI to touch it up, but I want practical effects because there's something very real to a practical effect, and they need to be horrifying because that's exactly what they are. Uh, Trollocs are not marginalized until much later in the series until everybody becomes so much more powerful. But at the beginning, they should they should be way more powerful than any of the characters that we see with the exception of Moraine and Lan. Um, so they should be intimidating. Like one Trolloc should be totally horrifying to Rand. You know, obviously later on, Rand kills 100,000 of them by himself, but this is way before that. So I want at the beginning to the, for them to be horrifying. Okay, and then watching our characters scale in power above some of the shadow spawn, to me, that's going to be really, really interesting. So, okay. 
feel like they need more practical effects for the Trollocs. They they come up so often that you know if I just thought they do come up so often. So they're going to need to come up with masks and things like that. I can play Narg. See, I don't think I would be a very good Narg, MK. Uh, I think I would be a much better old Aiel, uh, a balding old Aielman. Um, if I ever get cast, I'm going to be an Aiel extra. That's what I would want to be. Or, you know, I can play a loyal. I'll just do the motion capture for loyal and let somebody else voice actor it. So that way, Daniel and I could both be in the show. Daniel gets to be Ulver, and uh, I would be loyal. Small battles can be masks, but the large battle, yeah, of course, in the large battles, they're going to have to be CGI, but they can base that around the practical effects that they made um, with masks and prosthetics and things like that. So there are certainly, so here's another part that I'm going to be kind of excited for. The battle scenes in Wheel of Time, I'm excited and yet, yet kind of slightly... I want to say scared, that's the wrong word, but nervous about how the battles will be portrayed because some of the battles later in the series are incredible in scale. The first real battle, so there's two battles that come up that are relatively smaller. Well, I take that back. The first battle is relatively large in scale. I'm not sure if they're going to show it, though, because it's not super important to see. The first battle is actually the Battle of Tarwin's Gap at the end of the Idle World. That's a huge battle. I mean, it's basically all of the forces of Shinar versus a huge Shadow Spawn army, but Rand shows up out of nowhere and kills the army. So um, I don't know that we're going to see that because I don't know that that's going to be in the budget up front. That's the type of thing that will be in down the road. Uh, I don't think we'll see that. So that's a very large-scale battle, um, but it's not super consequential uh, to actually see on screen. The second battle that we see is the Battle of Falma. And that's not really a huge one. It's the Heroes of the Horn, about 2,000 White Cloaks, and then the Shan Chan, which are not tons of them. So that's not a massive battle, but it's a battle, nevertheless. Uh, the Battle of Two Rivers, I think, comes next, and that's where, you know, if you don't count the Stone of Tear, uh, which I don't because that's not really a battle. Uh, the Battle of the Two Rivers, where they defend against Trollocs, there's only, what, 500 to 1,000 Trollocs, I think it is. So it's not... It's not a crazy number of them, and it's not a huge battle, not a massive one or anything like that. So the, the first really huge consequential battle that's, I think, going to be really, really important that'll have to be CGI would be Dumai's Wells. And that one I really want to see done well. Like That's the first moment in the series that I think, from a battle perspective, they have to nail. Like They need to show the scale, the size of it, and then how horrific war is now with channelers. So that's what I want to see. Um, so I, I really think Dumai's Well should be a huge chunk of that budget. That should be a very impactful part. Um, let me see. A couple of you guys are agreeing with me on that, it looks like. So yeah, I, I uh, let me see. I want to see Matt's battle with Kuladin on screen. You know, that's interesting because it's never on screen. It would be very cool. I think we will see that. I don't think we're just going to have Matt. Hey, I beat him. Uh, kind of like they did in the books. Uh, I really like the music used for your channel for the Silly Song. So, by the way, the music that I use for my channel is from a band called Reflections of Sound. They made a... Um, they basically made a bunch of wheel time music. The link is in the description on the, of the video. By the way, while we're at it, if you guys can, if you're in here, if you can like the video, that really, really helps the, the algorithm for YouTube. Um, so if you have not done it already, if you don't mind liking this video, if you're watching it, just hit the like button. That really, really does help out, uh, you know, the way that my videos get recommended and things like that. And since I have been off for a week, uh, my videos are not going to get recommended very high right now because I haven't posted anything. So if you can, like I said, there's about 72 of you in the in the chat right now. If you can like the video, I would very, very much appreciate it. But uh, so thank you all for doing that. But uh, the link in the description below will take you if you want to listen to all their music. There's a lot of wheel time specific music there. It's pretty cool. Um, so that I do have permission to use it from them. They were very gracious about that. Um, in fact, they're they pretty much watch the channel all the time. So it's pretty cool. Uh, 
they're awesome. Okay, so where where have I lost? You may see a large scale in Shadow Logoff with Mashadar in the first season with large groups of trucks. Yeah, but there's about 500 of them there. So again, it's not we're not talking like Dumai's Wells where there's roughly a hundred thousand people on the battlefield. Okay, so it's a little different there than it is with 500 Trollocs attacking, you know, and, and running running Maureen and the party into Shadar Logoth. So Lord of the Rings versus Wheel of Time versus Game of Thrones prequel and his Dark Materials. May the odds ever be in your favorite. My vote is Wheel of Time. I am not, this is weird. I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan, massive Lord of the Rings fan. I am excited for the Lord of the Rings show but not really. Uh, and I'm not sure why I'm not excited. I think maybe it's because the Hobbit films just have a very bitter taste in my mouth right now about that series. I don't know why. The Game of Thrones prequels will be interesting, but to me, at this point, it feels like a cash grab. It doesn't feel very... Uh, I don't know. May, I, may, my mind might change on that when I see some more about it, but... His Dark Materials, I'm a little bit more excited about. Number one, I like the cast. I feel like that story can be good. So I'm certainly I'm certainly going to watch all of those. His Dark Materials, I'm, I'm a little bit more excited about than the other ones. But yeah, absolutely. I think Wheel of Time has the potential to be huge, guys. I really do. If it's done well. And it's got to catch... If it's going to be done well, it's got to catch a following from the beginning. So first of all, all of us need to promote this, you know, the heck out of it. So that would be great. Um Okay, so thank you, James, for doing dishes and stopping to like the video. I appreciate you. So the sizes of the army and the will of time are ridiculous. I would actually like for the show to tone it down a little bit. Well, Dow Game, they, they, they're they ridiculous at the end, but that's because it's the entire world. They're not really ridiculous at the beginning. Okay, I don't, I don't really think it's that ridiculous, frankly. Uh, you know, army sizes at the beginning of the books, like they talk about a 5,000 person army being a significant army. Like that's not huge. That's, it doesn't get huge until later on when Rand unites the world and then starts having, for instance, has uh, has Darlin recruit up an army in tier. Nobody really has standing armies outside of small forces and then the, the borderland nations have standing armies because they have to. And then the Trollocs have been multiplying, and then we start seeing large Trolloc armies. But if you really think about it, they're not that crazy big. They're not. Um, for instance, I think, uh, so Andor has a population of around 10 million people. That's straight out of Robert Jordan's mouth. And Elaine says the maximum that she thinks that they could recruit army-wise is about 200,000. And that would be a lot of untrained farmers. So that would be kind of a draft situation. 200,000 people out of a 10 million um, strong country. And that's the largest of them. Okay. So the borderland combined army is about 200,000. Let's assume they left some behind, call it 250,000 people. That's not a crazy huge army considering this is set around, this is not medieval like game of Thrones. This is more think Renaissance era. Um, so if you want to think of a good example, I would say maybe this is a little after the time period for the, uh, wheel of time, but Napoleon raised a 600,000 person army to march on Russia, for instance, um, from France. And France had a population of roughly 18 million people then. So I don't think the armies are that out of whack. I, I just don't think they are. So, so, okay. Lord of the Rings has been done, but there's a lot of lore that hasn't been explored. Like I would be really interested in seeing some of the law, the way back history of Lord of the Rings. I'm not at all interested in seeing more about Aragorn. I'm not. Um, I feel like his character has been fleshed out. We don't need to see that. Uh, and they're just going to be adding stuff to the story there. That's maybe why I'm not as excited about it. If the series has enough steam to get through all the way to the last book, the, the last season will be the most epic and most expensive season of television ever. 100% agree, Louise. Uh, the last battle, the scale of it, is ridiculous. Some of the stuff that happens is ridiculous. My worry is been in there that breaks apart just battle sequences. So that's where you have you know Perrin running around the, the dream. You have you know Elaine fighting off uh, dark friends while she gets captured and Brigitte is killed and you have all these little individual things happening 
within that greater battle, it would be an epic set of television. I, I think they would have to condense the last battle. Though. I don't think they can just do a whole scene of it. Or a, uh, I should say a whole season of last battle. I just think that'd be nuts. But so, okay. Uh, given the size and number of the large major cities, they should have pretty large armies. Yeah. We, we know, for instance, Tarvalin um, is roughly 500,000 to 700,000 people live in Tarvalin. Camelin was about 300,000. Tyr was about 300,000. And keep in mind also, this is a culture that's not very urban. So most people don't live in the cities. Andor has a lot of large cities. Uh, we learn a lot. Altara has a lot of large cities. So the populations are fairly large. They're just not all in the major cities. Uh, Michael Cochran says the Wheel of Time would probably fit into a 16th or 17th century tech period. Yes, but add in magic to it. So people live longer. The populations, although it's in a population decline, people tend to live longer because, number one, disease has been relatively eradicated. Uh, that was probably done during the Age of Legends and carried over. Um, but on top of that, you've got Aes Sedai that can heal people, things like that. So... Um, the Two Rivers was about 2,000 at the end. I'm interested where you see that, Cornbread Jones, because I think it was larger than that. Um, I think the population of the Two Rivers was much larger than 2,000. Or are you referring to the army? Maybe I'm not sure what you're you're saying there. Um, okay. The Lord of the Rings series is based on the Second Age, you think? I, I haven't seen much about it, so I could be wrong. Uh, the biggest problem with an army size is supplying it. A large, or an army larger than 100,000 cannot stay in one place for an extended amount of time wherever it goes throughout and totally, it leaves totally empty land. Yeah, I mean, they brought a lot of supplies with them. They talk about that, but you're absolutely right. But they actually address that in the books. That's something that they continually come across in the books is trying to get food, supply themselves. Uh, eventually, gateways help with that. That's maybe why those armies aren't that large. The Sean Chan are so good because they have excellent logistics. They have uh, flying things. They've got a lot of structure to their army, and that's why they were able to maintain larger armies. So, okay. They would almost have to make the last battle into a season. I agree, but I'm not sure how that would look. I think that season could be... They would have to mix in things that weren't battle. Let's just put it that way. I think the... Teleron Riyadh will look like Inception. Agreed. I, I think that's a good model for what they can do with it. I'm excited for that. Uh, I hope they do not. Somebody mentioned, I think, in my Discord server that, that they were talking about cutting that. I definitely do not want to see them cut that. Um, I think the, the World of Dreams is an intricate part of the magic system, is an intricate part of the world. And I think it's freaking cool. Um, and you take out some of Egwene and some of Perrin's best scenes if you remove that. So I absolutely do not want to see that removed. Um, the army sizes are realistic in the books, but not for the budget of the show. Okay, so let's talk about that. I disagree with that. Uh, why I say that? Anymore, CGI armies are very easy to easy to create when you don't have to do upfront details. So if they're going to show like all of them fighting, but at once, then which they're not going to do. They're not going to show the whole battle across the the way you know think the hobbit as much as i didn't like the hobbit that cgi was pretty bad at times because they zoomed in on cgi characters having battle like i think they can do the actual fighting up close with real actors and then when they do the panning shots to show the scale that can be done in cgi and it's not that expensive okay uh the, Wheel of, the, the Lord of the Rings budget is not actually a billion. That's a figure of what they assume it will end up costing. They spent $250 million to get the rights to it. So that's part of that billion number that's been thrown around. Uh, um, it's Reichert, I'm assuming, if I'm saying that right. But they're not going to spend $250 million a season or anything like that. It's eventually going to be... Um, but, uh, yeah, it'll eventually be a high budget. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's going to be that. Uh, world of Dreams, in my opinion, is the best part of the Wheel of Time world. Agreed. I, I love it. Um, it'll be interesting how they depict channeling magic. I also am kind of excited for that as well. I, I think uh, we've addressed this because 
uh, Rafe talked about it. Rafe talked about he really liked how they did it in Doctor Strange. And so I agree with that. I think Doctor Strange is a good model for it. If they make that good, I'm excited to see it. Uh, welcome, Goat Hill. Um, I just got here. They're going to incorporate a new spring into season one. I doubt it. I very much doubt that. Um, my thoughts on a new spring will be it will be great. They're not going to do the novel. Let's just put it that way. What I do think we will see is that's going to be a season two or season three flashbacks as they're trying to show more about Moraine's goals as they incorporate Swan into the picture and maybe start dealing with that dynamic of Lan and Nynaeve's relationship and Lan's history with Moraine because they start to have conflict over Rand later on. So I think it's going to be really important at that point to flesh their characters out more, but I don't think we'll see that in season one. Uh, let me know if you guys disagree me disagree with me on that, but that's my take on it'll just be flashback scenes. I don't think we'll see the whole novel. I think we'll see bits and pieces there. Okay, so many people say that the um, – that the world of dreams is a soft magic system. Why the rules are given and followed. The simple rule is you can only do what you know you can do. Uh, if you want to do more, you need to find out how. So I agree and I disagree. I think it, Daniel did a video on this saying that wheel of time has both soft magic and hard magic. And I can kind of see where he comes from on that, from the standpoint of we keep learning new things about the world of dreams. So it comes across as a, well, now you can do this there and now you can do this there and now you can do this there, which has some of the hallmarks of a soft magic system. But you're right. The rules are very much explained there. And just because we don't learn about those rules, they actually are followed fairly well throughout the series, even in the earlier parts. So I agree with you. I think it's more of a hard magic system. I really do. Louise Felipe, would you extend the series length time-wise? Like a lot of things happen in three years, making it last longer, and the timeline will not only make it more believable, but will help with the actors aging. Here's how I think they're going to address that. This is off the top of my head, so don't get mad at me. I, I don't think they're going to address the time period at all. I don't think they're going to address how long it's taken. And I'll give you a good example of that. Let's again flash back to Game of Thrones. Watching the show, did you ever see addressed how long it actually went by? Did anybody notice or care how much time was went by? In fact, most readers of The Wheel of Time don't realize that it's only three years that have gone by. I get a lot of questions that say, how long did it go? Like, how long did it take? A lot of people don't even realize that it's only been three years. So... I, I don't think that'll matter too much. I just think they won't address it. That's my take on it. Is I just think it won't be addressed. Um, if that makes sense. Do you guys agree with that or no? Like, do you think if they don't agree or they don't address the, the time frames, do you think that'll matter? Uh, do you think they're going to address the broken weather? Uh, if they do, they need to address the time because of the broken season. So I agree with you there, but that's only really one time they need to do that. You've got the long you got the the long summer that they end up fixing with the bowl of the winds. I don't think they're gonna cut that. So hmm. But after that, then we've got winter and then winter goes away, and then we've got the extended, you know, it comes back. So after that, I don't really think that's a big deal. I think do you wish Tam would appear more in the TV series? I think he will. I think we'll see more of Tam. I think that's a character they'll see expanded along with Logan. How many seasons will Elaine be pregnant for? So I actually think that Elaine's pregnancy could be something that would be cut. Um, I don't think it's hugely consequential, although they might do it. Um, and if they do it, it, it doesn't need to be because they can just have that happen towards the end. So you're right. That would be another time indicator of how much longer has gone on, certainly. But I also don't think Elaine's pregnancy matters that much. It doesn't really ever mean anything other than she's pregnant and she complains about it. Um, I am interested to see what you guys think about men. Do you think they'll put men's prophets or men's viewings in? How do you think they'll portray that? And then on top of that, 
how many of those do you think they'll actually, do they want to do that much foreshadowing early on? It works in a book. Do you think it'll work on the show? I'm interested to see what you have to say on that. She rallies the troop with her pregnancy, though, sort of. Um, I, again, I don't think it's that big of a deal. They could show her rallying troops one way or the other, though. And yeah, it's all her complaining about goat's milk. The only other thing that's significant is men. The reason I bring up men is men had a viewing that said her babies would be born and fine. So she thinks she's invulnerable then and starts doing crazy out of character things because she thinks she can't be harmed. So I agree with men. I uh, There are a lot of people that have said they would love to have men cut. Um, I even think Daniel said he wanted to have men cut or combined or something like that. I love men. I, I like men as a I like her viewings. I just hope they do them in a way that doesn't reveal too much. I want them to be subtle. Subtle viewings that in hindsight look amazing. Like, wow, that foreshadowed that, but then also don't give away anything. So I think there's going to be some skill in the way. How do, the, do they show the viewings the way men sees them? Or do they just have men saying that? Because I, I don't think men can just say it. I think at some point we're going to have to see how the viewings are envisioned. Like, does she see it above their head? That type of a thing. So I like men as a character. I really want to see that. Um, and I don't want them to cut that. So, yeah, that, that's my two cents on that. Thank you, uh, Critchard. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Uh, glad you love the channel. Hopefully you're enjoying the content. Only on book eight. So... If you are only on book eight, you need to be very careful in this video because we've been talking about some spoilers. Um, if you are new in here, by the way, and you just showed up in the channel, if you again, if you don't mind hitting the like button on the video, it really helps promote everything. Um, I appreciate it if you guys do that. It just helps things out uh, with the YouTube algorithm. So yeah, can't cut. I don't think they're going to cut any of the three girls. I don't think that's going to happen at all. But I do think what they're going to have happen Thank you. Appreciate the money. Appreciate that. Brax, Brax W. Uh, um, thanks, man. If, you, if you're going to donate money, make sure you ask me a question. Uh, <laughs> uh, that way you can get priority there. Anytime anytime somebody does that, they're going to get priority to, for me to address it for certain. Then. But, but I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Um, uh, and I'm and Richard, be happy to stop in. I just don't want to spoil anything for you. We've been hitting on a couple of the things there. So, um, so Louise, you kind of answered my question there. You said you think men can just say it, and then they would cut some of the more spoilery things. Uh, I, I think they're going to need. I just think it needs to be visual at, at some point. I think we need to see how men sees it, and then down the road, have her just say it. Um, but maybe I could be wrong on that. I don't think those things that Elaine did would have been out of character if she wasn't pregnant. See, I agree with that too. I think there it's a little bit more her and Egwene are both very impatient. So they jump into things before they're ready. And I think that's a result of them being powerful to begin with. So, um, you know, they get themselves in over their head. Elaine is very reckless. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, you're right about that. She just does some other things. Uh, that are because she doesn't think she can get in trouble because she's pregnant. Let's just put it that way. So I actually don't mind if they have that viewing there as well. Jeff Fisher. Actually, I would say Min is my favorite female character in the books, tied with Moraine and Nynaeve. She is Rand's best and most loyal companion. Let me think about that. I, I wish she was fleshed out a little bit more. Um She's kind of doting on Rand for a while. That was my only issue with her is I think she's in, she feels obligated to be in love with Rand. She does fall in love with Rand, which I think is cool. But then she starts defending him when he shouldn't be defended. But maybe that's in character too. Um, but she does seem to understand what he's going through. And I think that's a part of it that's important there. She understands the pressure on him. So I do, I agree. I like Min as a character. She didn't make my character list because. She actually doesn't have that many point of views. Um, so that's why she wasn't in it. 
Josie, I can really picture some really awesome freaky viewings, like with people with bloody faces. They should definitely show that. See, I agree. I think the visuals there, Josie, are are really good. I think it's important to show the visuals. Um, not all the time, maybe, but a lot of it. Because uh, also she has some horror at seeing stuff. Like think about the time when she shows up in the White Tower and starts seeing people with blood. Like there's some foreshadowing there that isn't clear what's going on. That's the cool part that they can do with men is there's – her viewings are not always clear. So we we can see stuff that go, oh, that's what it was, and, and not understand what's exactly going to happen. I hope they do that well. Okay. Sorry. So many, I'm sorry, guys, if I'm missing you. Uh, feel free to say it again. Okay. Hey, so what's, what's a man's woman – Hey, that's what a man's woman should do. Defend him against all others, but then tell him what he's doing wrong in private. Just my opinion. So I don't know that I'll, I'll comment to that directly, that that's what a woman's role is, but I would say that, yeah, I mean, I think it's understandable that she's defending him. She, and she sort of privately calls him out, but she asks him questions in not a direct way. So she doesn't come at him. She tries to empathize with him. And I think she thinks that that's her way of helping him. But then later on, he she even loses it there because I, I think it can be believable there. I would say that. Um, guys, I don't think we're going to see Jeff Bridges as anything, um, unfortunately. Um, I, I addressed that, I think, in my Tom casting video. As awesome as that would be, I just don't think we will. Um, I love Jeff Bridges. I would love to have the dude in the show, but um, it's not going to happen, I don't think. I wonder how they're going to handle Perrin's ability to talk to the wolves. Same issue as with Luz Theron and Rand, but um, but in the more abstract issue of it being an animal. So I think the way they'll do it is they'll have Perrin say out loud what he's interpreting the visions as. That's what I think. So Perrin's, Perrin will talk to the wolves by repeating what they say. I don't know if you guys can follow what I'm thinking about that, but like he'll see a vision from the wolves. You'll, you'll see the wolf making a, some type of a movement. And then I think we'll hear Perrin repeat what he thinks that it's saying, and that will be the way of communicating it to us. So I don't think we'll hear an audible voice of the wolves. I think we'll see visions, and then we'll hear Perrin say them. That's my interpretation. But there could be a different way of doing that. If you guys have one, please say it in the, in the channel. Cornbread Jones, I love it. Daniel Wu from Enter the Badlands as Lamb. That is my pick as Lamb. I would love to see that. If you... A lot of people thought that was a controversial pick. I think he would be amazing. First of all, he's got the fighting down. He can be kind of a solemn badass type, which is what Lan is. Um, he's actually a good actor, and he's also a choreographer. So he could choreograph the entire thing. So I would love to see Daniel Wu. Obviously, I addressed that in my Lan casting video. Uh, Louise, we kind of talked about this earlier. Uh, I would like to see Luz Theron as an actual actor that Rand can see. That's what I want to see. Okay. We will wrap up here in a minute. I'll address a couple more of these. And uh, Okay. No, Jeff Fisher, I don't think you're sexist. I was just saying I think maybe the way you phrased it was maybe not what you were thinking, that it's her role to do that. I don't think that's what you meant. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, defend, defend your spouse. I, I get what you're trying to say. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to single you out thinking that way. Josie, I think that Hop with Hopper, there may be a need to do some talking or it will be awkward looking convo to himself. I think you'll see Hopper, Josie. I think the way I'm at least envisioning it, you're going to see Hopper. You're going to see Hopper emote a little bit um, as a um, mouth wise or look or stare at something. And you'll hear Perrin repeating it. I don't think it'll be a conversation as much as it's... Uh, Perrin will just kind of do it and say out loud what he's doing. I think it can be done in a way that will make sense. At least it does in my head. Um, you think Daniel Wu is too young? I, I disagree with that to play Lan. Age, again, guys, is not going to be a big deal. They can age people up. Again, Lan's not that old. And Daniel Wu is, is in his 40s, so I'm not too worried about that. Kathy Bates as Cad Swain would be great, music lover. I would actually like to see Kathy Bates as Varen, but just me. 
<laughs> I, I would love that. Either way, she uh, uh, she would be bad. And again, sorry, Jeff Fisher. I did not mean to make you sound like a, a sexist asshole. That wasn't my goal. Um, I just read it that way, and I said, well, I don't know that that's her role. But, uh, yeah. Uh, but I do agree, Blasphemous Prime, Kathy, Kathy Bates would be a great Varen. I'm excited about that. Um, okay, so I think that's what we're going to call it. We're going to call it here, guys. Thank you all uh, for doing this. If you want to support the channel, first of all, check out the Audible link below. You can get a free audiobook. Uh, I know I pitched that a lot, but it's a pretty freaking cool deal. Free audiobook just for signing up. And you help the channel when, when you do that, so I appreciate it. Also, please like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, check out the Patreon if you want to see some of the stuff I'm working on. I've got a lot of maps. So a lot of the maps you guys have been seeing me do, are I'm posting them up in the Patreon. Feel free to also join the Discord server. You can do that by checking out my Patreon. Click on the link there that it talks about the Discord server, and then you can get in and chat with me all the time. Look for a video tomorrow with the winners to the Sword Form Contest, and we'll have a new Wheel of Time Jeopardy coming out in the near future. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you joining me. I'm happy to be back and hopefully getting some videos out to you all soon. Take care, guys.